In this section, we will be going through some of the frameworks that are currently being utilized for working with digital health technologies. In the presented framework, authors have defined biomass as connected digital medicine tools that process data captured by mobile sensors using algorithms to generate measures of behavior and or all physiological functions. Currently, given to the number of new developments and novelty of the developments, the terminology, approaches, and evidentiary standards are not well aligned across different areas. So there is an emphasis on development of consensus approaches that can evaluate different areas of digital health. Some of them being clinical utility, cybersecurity, validation needs, etc. In this publication, authors have tried to clarify core terminology and best practices for evaluating biometric monitoring technologies. The proposed framework combines approaches taken in software and hardware standards and wet biomarker development. The, verifi uh, the verification section utilizes the verification and validation in software and hardware standards. The separate concepts of analytical and clinical validations are derived from wet biomarker development. The verification in the framework intends to evaluate ability to sense the signal of a phenomena and convert it into a sensor generated signal that allows for data collection. The raw data can have varying definition. Therefore, framework uses term sample level data as a construct which can have potential to provide clearer and consistent meaning across all biomass. The purpose is to evaluate the performance of the sensor using a specific criteria and that the sample level data being generated is correct within the specific range. This step of framework is recommended to be carried out by engineers, data and computer scientists. By generating and processing the sample level data, this process is usually carried out at the bench before using it in human subjects. The definition of verification criteria is usually left up to the manufacturer or the regulatory authorities. Establishing standard performance metrics has been identified to be a challenging problem because the performance requirement can change depending upon the use case that is being assessed. The next step proposed by authors is the process of analytical validation. It involves evaluation of algorithm acting on sample level data for generating acceptable physiological or behavioral metric, which can be used for measurement, detection, or prediction. Analytical validation is recommended to be carried out by engineers, data scientists, analysts, statistician, behavioral scientists, or clinical researchers. It is carried out through development of protocols and then applying algorithms to process sample level data collected from the human subjects using these protocols. This process is carried out after the verification of biomet but before the clinical validation. The metric produced by these algorithms should be evaluated against an appropriate reference standard. Using a high quality reference standard is preferable over the lower quality one. The authors recommend caution in choice of reference standard for analytical validation of the studies. They emphasize that it is crucial to understand how the selected reference standard measures and interprets the desired metric. There can be possibility where the reference is not available or is subpar. In such situations, clinical validity and utility becomes even more important. The last step in V3 framework is clinical validation. According to authors, this step evaluates if a specific uh, this step evaluates in a specific context of use and specific target population that the biomet acceptably identifies measures or predicts state or experience that are either clinically, biologically, physically, or functionally meaningful. It is recommended to be carried out by clinicians uh, or the clinical team that will be using this algorithm to generate scientific evidence in specific context of use and in the specific target population. Clinical validation would need appropriate study with applicable inclusion and exclusion criteria, measurement and outcomes to assess the content validity. The assessment should be done in the environment where it, will, where it is intended to be used. 
An important recommendation that evaluators should pay attention to is the accuracy, precision and reliability requirement, which will be, clear, uh, which will be very crucial for meaningful interpretation of results in clinical research setting. Further details of this framework can be found in the link provided below. The purpose of proposed framework would be to identify fit for purpose novel digital endpoints. This framework is based on the assumption that the technologies used for monitoring, diagnosis, and prognosis of disease adhere to the medical device regulations. The process is divided into four main sections. Each section assesses the central question and important considerations for it. The framework also provides checklists for different considerations. More information can be found in the references provided at the bottom of this slide. The first section is the endpoint selection. The central question for this stage is to identify what you would like to measure and how would you measure it. Authors have provided a number of important considerations for it. The candidate endpoint should have relationship with the studied disease or the general quality of life. The stakeholder's opinion should be an important input at this stage. Input from patient and patient advocacy groups would be vital during the selection and validation process. There can be an early engagement with regulators as a part of this process flow as well, which would be used to identify appropriate regulatory interaction channels or the possibility to discuss how clinically meaningful change can be defined or investigated. Once the first question is answered, the technology to be used for it should be identified and appropriate output characteristics should be selected. The next stage of the framework is recommended to be the technical validation. The central question for the technical validation would be to assess if the technology would be suitable for the intended use. Some important considerations recommended by the authors include streamlining the user experience and technical qualifications. Robust assessments of usability, reliability, and reproducibility of techno technology along with the flow of the data should be uh, performed. It is possible that the, if possible, the technology uh, should be compared against the technical, uh, available technical gold standard. The reliability and consistency of the device should be assessed in the form of inter-device or in in form of inter-device and intra-device variability. The lack of these features can introduce issues with interpretation of results. The flow of the data should be as automated as possible and it should have proper security and privacy provisions. Authors also recommend compliance with necessary regulations regarding the audit trails, storage and processing of the data. Some analysis should also be conducted with non-patient test subjects to ensure that the novel endpoint measurement actually measures the process you want to qualify in real life. Another important consideration for this stage is to, is to discriminate, is to discriminate um, the activities that might be similar, uh, that might have similar response by the technology. Additionally, plans to ensure that the device is worn by intended subjects should be in place. The next stage is the clinical validation. Clinical validation assesses the central question about whether the candidate endpoint shows promise in patient population. Some important considerations for this phase of validation are usability, tolerability, and compliance. It includes assessments whether the technology is minimally invasive and requires as little manual input as possible. Since there can be increase in decentralization of clinical trials, the user experience of patients, tolerability by vulnerable populations such as children and elderly, and technical and usability issues such as decreased smartphone battery life should be properly assessed. And these aspects will be very useful in addressing the compliance and retention in trials. Additionally, there should be assessments to differentiate between the patient and control population early on to ensure that these differences are there to be assessed. It can save a lot of important resources if no differences can be identified between these two, between the patient uh, population and the control population. 
Another important consideration is repeatability and variability from the clinical validation perspective. The measurement should be stable over time whenever there is no change in the disease activity or in the absence of intervention. The change should be associated with improvement or decline in patient health in a specific context. Some additional considerations include impact of real world variability like seasons, weathers, locations, impact of baseline factors, concomitant drug use, etc. One of the important considerations in clinical validation stage is correlation with an existing disease metric. Correlating the novel endpoint with the traditional end endpoint would be an important step. There can sometimes be suboptimal correlations and the reason for it should be determined. It could be that the novel endpoint is suboptimal or it could be that the accepted gold standard that is being used is a suboptimal one. Or it could be possible that these two endpoints are assessing two different aspects of the disease. One important uh, recommendation by author is head-to-head -head comparison between devices to show comparability or to develop conversion factor. And that can help in combining data from multiple devices or, or from multiple studies. So if the central question of clinical validation has a positive response, the candidate endpoint stage is assessed. The considerations for candidate endpoint stage are provided um, in the paper and in the last box. Once this assessment is done and if the response is positive, a fit for purpose clinical candidate would be identified. We are going to discuss another framework um, created by Taylor et al to advance the utilization of digital health technologies. Here are some definitions that will be relevant. Digital outcome measures. These are the measures derived from data captured with digital health technology. Active tests are the scripted or standardized tasks that are performed by individual and the data is then collected using digital health technologies. Passive monitoring is the process where the recording is carried out for human behavior and physiology using the digital health technology where the active participation from individuals are not required. Ecologically valid measurements are the measurements which are carried out in participants' everyday life or the, com or the conditions which are very much similar to participants' everyday life. Since the features are the characteristics that are derived by using algorithms uh, when applied to the sensor data. In the present framework, the author have proposed two fundamentally different approaches. The first one is derived by the data and the second one is derived by the patient's voice. These two approaches can be used either on their own or they can also be used in combination with each other. In current segment, we will only be focusing on patient-centric approach. For the data-centric approach, please refer to the publication provided in the link uh, at the bottom of this slide. So for the frameworks, authors have proposed use of aggregated symptom data rather than using single sensor feature. The reason being, they may better capture global disease burden and they may allow for detection of changes in heterogeneous population across individuals and within the individuals over time. The first process for developing a patient-centric digital outcome measure is to focus on the voice of the patient. It can either be derived by the concept elucidation studies to inform identification of a sensor feature, or it could be done by qualitative interviews to identify symptoms which correspond to the sensor features for the studies where the sensor was identified using clinical insights. In the initial step, impaired activities of daily living are identified which are then used to identify the disease's symptom that can be the reason for it. The concept model in this framework describes the symptoms and the associated impacts that are important to patients. Subsequently, digital health technology tool assessment is identified that can be linked to the symptom. And then the features are derived from the data that can be the best measure of this activity of daily living difficulty. The conceptual framework maps the disease symptom and their impact to the digital health technology uh, feature, uh, which are intended to measure the most relevant aspects from the patient's perspective. This process is repeated for the other activities of daily living limitations as well. 
These conceptual frameworks are then subsequently reviewed by the clinical experts to assess if the mapping is clinically robust. The next step is the psychometric evaluation using independent build and validation datasets. With build datasets, the feature evaluation is carried out which encompasses rest, test retest reliability, change over time, or meaningful progression, disease progression. Only the reliable features are carried forward to the next stage. In the next stage, scoring algorithm is created and is subsequently assessed for the psychometric properties. After initial validation with build dataset, an independent validation dataset is used to assess the robustness of psychometric properties. Subsequently, minimally clinically important difference estimates and responder definitions are generated. More information on this specific uh, framework can be um, found in the link provided at the bottom of the slide. This is the snapshot of landscape of emerging frameworks. More details can be found in the publication that is provided in the reference. In this particular figure, the partial information from the figure is displayed due to the size constraints. The next framework is the evaluation framework for fit for purpose. The reference of it is again provided in the reference to, uh, to find out more details on this. To provide a brief overview, this framework encompasses the V3 framework that we initially discussed. However, it also adds four more sections to it, which are meant to assess security, data rights and governance, utility and usability, and economic feasibility. So with this, we are going to conclude our discussion on the frameworks.